Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we have a pretty interesting one for you. We are going to check out a monitor that is one of AOC's most popular models in China, and it's just landed here in Europe, and we're told it is already flying off the shelves. I'm talking about the Q24G2A, a monitor that offers a very unique combination of a 23.8 inch panel size with a 1440p resolution. That's right, a 2560 by 1440 p display that's not even 24 inches from corner to corner. It's landing around the £220 mark here in the UK using an IPS panel with a 165Hz refresh rate, there's a claimed 350 nits of peak brightness, and it even comes G-Sync certified. But what's it like to use, and is the panel itself even any good? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. We'll start off then with a look at the design of the Q24G2A, and I have to say it's really nothing we haven't seen before from AOC. In fact, I think if you imagined what an AOC monitor looks like, it's probably going to be something a lot like this. That means we get a mostly matte black aesthetic, but with some visible red accents along with a wide V-shaped stand. Most of the red is on the back of the screen, apart from one ring around the base of the stand, and there's also a thin strip of red underneath the chin on the front panel. The overall look is absolutely fine in my opinion, and we do still get nice and slim bezels on the top and sides. It's undeniably quite a plasticky construction, however, but I do think for £220 we need to be realistic with our expectations, and it certainly doesn't feel that flimsy to me. The included stand also offers the full array of ergonomic adjustments, and that means we get height adjust up to 130mm, there's also 30 degrees of swivel both left and right, and then we get tilt from 4 degrees downwards to 21.5 degrees upwards. There's even the full 90 degree pivot functionality, so you can use this screen vertically if you want to. Alternatively, third party VESA 100x100 mounts are also supported. Connectivity, however, is a clear area where cutbacks have been made. We find only two video inputs, one of which is an HDMI 2.0 that doesn't even support 1440p at 165Hz, instead you're limited to 144Hz. However, you can get 165Hz over the DisplayPort 1.2 connector. Apart from one other 3.5mm audio jack, then that really is it. There's not a single USB pass-through, no USB-C, or anything like that. It's literally just those two video inputs and an audio jack. That is an undeniably basic experience, even at the £220 asking price. We can also note the five physical buttons which are located on the underside of the front chin. These are the only way to control the OSD as there's no OSD joystick here, which must be another cost saving exercise. The OSD itself is again nothing we haven't seen before from AOC. That means all of the settings are split into seven main tabs and overall it is fine, everything is sensibly laid out and it has all the key features that I'd expect. It is pretty ugly though and I have to be honest, I absolutely hate using those physical forward and back buttons to get around an OSD. I've honestly lost count of the amount of times I accidentally turned this screen off when I was just trying to press enter for instance. Maybe I have become spoiled by more expensive displays that do have OSD joysticks, but I really would have liked to see one here. AOC does have its iMenu Windows-based software as well though, and this does give you control over most of the key monitor functionality. Again, it's not an overly sophisticated piece of software, but if you do want to quickly change brightness or adjust overdrive without fiddling with the physical buttons, it does work. It's now time to move on to panel performance, however, where we're going to start off with our Spider X testing before we move on to things like response times and the gaming experience. Starting off with a look at the gamut then, the Q24 G2A offers 100% sRGB, 
80% Adobe RGB and 81% DCI P3 coverage. 100% sRGB is something we would certainly expect, though the latter two color spaces are more geared towards professional use, not something we're looking for from a £220 gaming monitor. As for brightness though, things are about what we'd expect from this sort of IPS LCD display. We measured a peak luminance of 381 nits, while it can go as low as 65 nits. Again, both are decent, if not class leading, but we do have to keep things in the context that this is a £220 monitor. Likewise, for contrast, we measured a peak ratio of 940 to 1, just shy of the claimed 1000 to 1 figure. If you want a more contrasty image, then I have to say a VA panel is going to be your best bet at this price point. Out of the box colour accuracy is not bad either. We measured an average delta E of 1.56, which is a solid result for a monitor of this class. One of the blue channels is miles out, however, with a delta E of 5.8 but that's only one wonky result and most of the others are much more consistent. Naturally, we did also calibrate this display, though I'd say for gamers, it's not really necessary. Still, the overall color accuracy did improve with a new average Delta E of 1.09, though that pesky blue channel is still pretty erratic with a Delta E of 5.47. Now though, we're going to come on to what you're all here for. We're going to talk about response times and then our gaming experience. All of our response time testing was done using the open source response time tool as developed by Tech Team GB. The Q24 G2A then has a total of four overdrive modes, off, weak, medium, and strong. There is also technically another one, which is the boost setting, though this is only available when G-Sync is disabled and it essentially uses the strong overdrive mode, but with MBR set to its maximum value, so I would not recommend it. Starting with overdrive turned off then at 165Hz, the Q24 G2A manages an average response time of 732 milliseconds. That's obviously not how anyone's actually going to use this screen, but it is still a decent result for something with no overdrive, so that does indicate a good level of panel quality. With overdrive now set to the weak mode, we can cut down the response times further with a new average of 5.78 milliseconds. This is noticeably faster than overdrive turned off and only one transition shows a tiny amount of overshoot. That said, we're only looking at 67% of transitions taking place within the 6.06 .06 milliseconds refresh rate window for 165 hertz, so it's not quite ideal yet. It's when we come to the medium overdrive that we find my preferred option for 165Hz gaming. Now this does introduce some overshoot with a handful of transitions exceeding their target by 10 RGB values or more. However, I still don't think that's very noticeable to the eye and it does reduce the average response time to 4.4 milliseconds. With the medium overdrive setting as well, we can see that now 83% of transitions are within the 6.06 .06 milliseconds window. Lastly then, we also have the strong overdrive mode, which does deliver the fastest average response time, hitting 3.53 milliseconds, but naturally it comes with a huge amount of overshoot to the point where I really wouldn't say that this was a realistic option for gaming. In fact, over half of the transitions missed their targets by 10 RGB values or more, so that's really not a great look, and I mean that literally. Just to put those results into perspective as well, here you can see our pursuit camera images using the Blurbusters UFO test, which showcased the three overdrive settings at 165Hz. One downside for the Q24 G2A though is its lack of a single overdrive mode. While I found the medium setting works best at 165Hz, at 100Hz it actually introduces too much overshoot, now with 40% of transitions exceeding their targets by 10 or more RGB values. Instead, I found that the weak overdrive mode works best at this refresh rate with its 5.52 millisecond average response time and 100% of transitions coming in within the 10 millisecond refresh window for 100 hertz. Likewise, we can also see that the weak mode works best if you're dropping down to 60 hertz as well. Here, there's only a small amount of overshoot but it does strike the best balance. For example, medium, as shown here, is simply not usable at 60 hertz due to the severe amount of overshoot. 
Overall then, for our comparative testing, we can see the Q24 G2A does sit towards the top of our chart with its best result of 4.4 milliseconds, grey to grey. For £220, I have to say, the response times are pretty impressive. As for what it's actually like gaming on this screen then, it definitely grew on me over the couple of weeks that I used this display. As we've established, it is nice and fast, about as fast as a good 165Hz IPS panel can be, so for FPS titles using the medium overdrive setting, I really didn't feel held back by the monitor in the slightest. The same goes for Forza Horizon 5 or any game really where fast movement is crucial, it is more than good enough to keep up and keep things feeling fluid. Even for slower paced games, it still looks pretty good, but my recommendation is if your frame rate does drop below 100 FPS, you would get a better experience with less overshoot by dropping down to the weak overdrive mode. You're probably also wondering what 1440p resolution feels like over the pretty small 23.8 inch screen size. To be perfectly honest with you guys, I myself do prefer a larger monitor. Something like 32 inches with a 4K resolution would be much more my cup of tea as I just prefer a larger image for gaming or watching videos. That being said, I just sat a bit closer with the Q24 G2A. I probably had it about a foot from my face and it was actually a pretty decent experience. Naturally, the main thing you're going to notice is the increased pixel density, and I've actually put together this little comparison chart here showing a range of different screen sizes and resolution combinations and their respective pixel densities, which is done in pixels per inch. As you can see, the actual overall sharpness is not far off what you'd get from a 4K at 32 inch screen size, and it really is a massive upgrade over 1080p resolution at a similar screen size. Obviously, a lot of this is gonna come down to personal preference, but I can imagine that competitive gamers who are maybe used to 24 or 25 inch screens, but who want the extra sharpness of 1440p instead of 1080p are definitely gonna find a lot to like here. I do, however, have just a couple of quick recommendations in terms of settings to change within the OSD. The first is going to be the white balance, which out of the box defaults to the warm mode, though to my eye this just looks a touch green. Instead, I recommend using the manual mode and reducing both the blue and the green channels down from 50 to 48, which just makes whites look that bit cleaner. For those who prefer a punchier image as well, you may want to look at the game color setting. This defaults to 10, but just by pushing it up to 11 does add that touch more vibrancy to the image. It's not gonna be ideal for any color sensitive work, but as this is a gaming monitor, I personally found it that bit more enjoyable with game color set to 11. It's also worth confirming that the Q24 G2A does support adaptive sync and it's even been officially G-Sync certified by Nvidia. I did all of my testing with an RTX 4090 and didn't experience any issues when G-Sync was enabled, no flickering or anything like that. So it's a definite thumbs up from me. Viewing angles are also okay. I have seen better as the image does start to look a touch washed out from wider angles, but as it's a relatively small screen, you're probably only ever gonna be sat directly in front of it, so it's not really an issue. Backlight bleed, however, was minimal, which is great. There was just a small patch in the bottom right corner and along the left edge. Finally then, the absolute last thing to mention, which I have deliberately left to the very end, is HDR. Now the monitor does support an HDR signal, but as far as I can tell, it's not even display HDR 400 certified. At least there's no mention of that either on the box or on AOC's product page. Either way, it doesn't have any form of local dimming, so I really would not bother with the HDR. It should go without saying, but you do need to pay a lot more than 220 pounds to get a proper HDR experience. To wrap things up then, I have to say I have been pleasantly surprised by the AOC Q24 G2A. Not because I thought the monitor was going to be bad, I just didn't think I would like the 1440p resolution over the 23.8 inch screen size. After a couple of weeks of testing though, it has definitely grown on me and I have to say I've had a pleasant experience using it. 
To be clear though, a number of compromises have been made here in order for AOC to hit the £220 price point. You only get two video inputs, the HDMI can't even do 165Hz and is limited to 144Hz at 1440p. There's also no USB pass-through, no USB-C, KVM or anything like that. Most painful to me though are the physical buttons used to navigate the OSD with no joystick in sight. And we also can't deny the fact that the build quality is definitely a bit plasticky. So while all of those are valid quality of life complaints, we also can't deny that the actual panel quality here is very impressive. Primarily, it is a fast and fluid experience. When using the medium overdrive, for instance, you get very good response times with minimal overshoot. And also for an IPS panel, the overall color accuracy, contrast and brightness are all about where we'd expect. Whether or not you actually want a 23.8 inch monitor with a 1440p resolution is another matter entirely. Though if AOC's sales data is anything to go by, it's certainly a more popular combination than I would have expected. It may not be perfect, but if you do want a fast, pixel-dense monitor that's also pretty reasonably priced, I'm happy to recommend the AOC Q24 G2A. That is going to do it for this review though guys, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, I want to hear from you guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of our content. Would also love if you guys came over to our Discord server where we can carry on the conversation. Again, that's linked down in the description. And while you're there, you can also find links to our merch store and you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic for Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.